Please welcome Dr. Sanaz Masumi. Our next speaker is a member of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation Executive Governance Board, a podiatric surgeon with the Santa Monica Podiatry Group for three decades. She has long been renowned for bringing a unique set of skills to the practice. Being multilingual, she is able to develop deeper connections with diverse communities and offers intuitive solutions to podiatric issues, particularly for female patients. She has a special interest in teaching, particularly in the area of patient education and residency training. She also serves as the executive director and secretary of the INF Foundation, a nonprofit organization that works internationally with the Farsi speaking community to reduce the stigma associated with alcoholism, substance abuse, and related social problems. She addresses issues such as addiction, human rights violation, HIV AIDS, environmental justice, and the plight of refugees around the world. Please welcome Dr. Abby Tofi. Thank you very much. I promise I keep my segment brief. I'm standing here as a physician, as a patient advocate, as a future patient, and a tiny but proud member of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. In the past year, I've had a handful of my loved ones in the ER and subsequently at the hospital for many months. And as you heard all day today, I'm not the only one who believes that we have to do much more, more than conferences and summits and um, yearly gatherings to basically safeguard patient safety. Part of succeeding in any endeavor is to be able to overcome the fear of change and change your priorities as many of the speakers this morning addressed. And I believe that we're here not just to hear um, the speakers address some of the uh, perspectives that they have on patient safety, but for all of us to learn from each other, from our experiences uh, with regards to patient care and patient safety. Because of that, um, I believe that many of us have um, this certain perspective of looking at some words and their meanings and believe that they have universal meanings like life, love, liberty, safety. I'm sure that everyone here has a different description or understanding of what patient safety means to them. Aside from what it means to me, I also try to look at it from a perspective of an equation that has two parts the people who provide the care and people who are receiving the care. And many of our speakers today addressed um, the perspective of the, those who provide the care, but I'd like to address also how important it is to look at patient safety from the perspective of those who receive the care. Um, one of the most important issues that I've faced, at least this year especially, was the fact that we've never talked about this in, in at least in the summits that I've uh, attended, is the issue of patient access. Just within the small microcosm of where I practice within the past six months, three of my colleagues retired, two passed away, one from a heart attack and a stroke, and one lady committed suicide, and four doctors no longer take insurance. Because of that, Unfortunately, patient access is very, very limited. And my patients now have to wait at least three months to see an infectious disease specialist, even if they're diabetic and they have osteomyelitis. They have to wait at least two weeks to get an MRI. It takes at least three months to see a vascular specialist. And some of my patients have to wait over a year to have a hip replacement. The world of medicine is changing and we have to, as all of our speakers today addressed, change and evolve and learn to also address the other end of the equation, which means empowering our patients with the information and the education to also participate in the world of patient safety. In 2019, I attended the annual meeting at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation, and um, five mothers were there because they lost their children after a tonsillectomy. 
And the reason for that was that none of the mothers believed that Benadryl, which was an over-the-counter medication, had, was a bad medication for their patients, for their children to take. And unfortunately, all of the surgeons prescribed Percocet. And unfortunately, those five children passed away. Yes, it is the responsibility of all of us to understand the meaning of patient safety and the protocols that we have to follow. But if those moms had the understanding that an over-the-counter medication is also considered a medication, they could have brought it up. They could have asked a question. And we also heard about the young lady that one of the panelists today addressed um, who lost her daughter. And she was on the panel with me last year, and she talked about the fact that she was so scared of asking the physician who was taking care of her daughter too many questions because she didn't want to make the doctor upset. If she knew her rights, if she knew that as a mother, as somebody whose child's life is in danger, she has the right to ask questions. She has the right um, to understand that she can get a second opinion or question what the doctor is saying. Her, her daughter would have been alive today. Unfortunately, because of the fact that the patient access is limited because of all the issues that um, unfortunately the, the medical field is facing, we also have to address the fact that we are talking about healthcare workers fatigue and compassion fatigue. It's never been this hard to hire um, healthcare workers that are compassionate about what they want to do. So I believe that we're gathered here today and every year at every summit to also learn about what we can do and how we can contribute to implementing that culture of safety. And so I would like to present you um, with a few questions. The first one is, last year we met at a lot of photo sh um, um, uh, meetings and workshops to learn how to improve patient safety. How many of us took what we learned and implemented it in our settings. Many of us are on staff at many hospitals, and I would love to know how many of us actually talk to the administration and demand for them to use the Patient Safety Movement Foundation's apps and to implement the culture of safety. If we don't ask, if we don't take this information here and try to implement it in our own setting, then how can we make a difference? How can we change the statistics? If we look at the number of um, the statistics of people who overdose from drug abuse, provisional data from CDC's National Center for Health Statistics indicated that there were an estimated 107,543 drug overdose deaths in the United States in 2023. We all know what the statistics for preventable harms are. Joe stated that this morning. What are we doing to address the problem? If we don't, we can't see the difference in terms of what is being done for one versus the other. And I know what Joe is doing for that crisis. How can we help to address that, that statistics in our own community and in what we do as physicians? Nothing will change unless we also think about how to empower those whose lives are in danger, which is the patient population. I, about six years ago, with the help of Patient Safety Movement Foundation, created a very short but concise two-page brochure that I share with my patients before I see them, which lists all the things that I think my patients need to know to basically assure their safety as somebody who's going to receive the care. And I'd be more than happy to share it with you guys um, because I think having that as a tool to empower the other side of the equation can certainly definitely help the patient to also demand what is rightfully theirs, which I believe is a human right. I would like to express my deep gratitude to Joe and Sarah and the magnificent team at Patient Safety Movement Foundation for giving me the privilege and the honor to be a tiny member of their family. And 
on behalf of current patients, future patients, administrators and hospitals, and everybody in the healthcare um, world. I would like to thank you, Joe, for your vision, for your mission, for your selfless endeavors, for your humility, for your humanity, and the gift of your genius for helping so many people, set, you know, lives to be saved. And I think we, sh we can all contribute to what Joe has started by just creating an environment where we can learn from each other. And one of the aspects of coming together and learning from each other was something that I was sharing with Dr. Ramsey and Dr. Durkin last year, where after talking to a few of the patient safety officers that were present at the summit, I heard from a lot of them that they feel intimidated, not just by the administration, but also by their doctors who they're working with. And I thought to myself, what, it, what would it take for an outside entity to assign a patient safety officer to different hospitals so they can do their job without fearing about the outcome of the information that they're gathering. And if we create those workshops and invite those patient safety officers to come together and sit down and talk to each other and learn from each, other, each other's experience, maybe we can help them, empower them with more tools so all of the um, information that our speakers today mentioned can be implemented in, in action and not just words and seminars. Thank you very much.